I wanted to see if ChatGPT, everyone's favorite AI assistant, could help me quickly make a video game using Python. So I asked ChatGPT to make an ASCII art version of Tetris in Python, and here's what happened. Sure, here's an example of Tetris using ASCII art in Python. Copy code. A few moments later. Python 3, Tetris.py. Oh, look at that. So before we get into the details of this chat GPT Tetris, I just want to remind everyone out there to just help us out and like, comment, subscribe. We're just trying to get some love from the YouTube algorithm. So if you could help us out, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks. So how did we get here? ChatGPT basically became my peer programming buddy, helping me to program this Python ASCII Tetris game. We all remember Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow basically changed the way that modern programmers work, giving us an easy way to get our questions answered by experts in the industry, and giving us an unlimited repository of previous questions and answers to read to be able to further our understanding of programming. Now, what ChatGPT does is basically takes Stack Overflow, takes Google search results, and combines it in a natural interface that allows us to just ask natural language questions and get an answer, get a summary, and even get code generated. So I asked it to generate a, a ASCII art version of Tetris in Python, and it provided some code. Now let's take a look at this code. So we can see this is Python code, of course, and there's an option to copy the code. We can see the board height, the board width, okay. So we kind of get a sense of how it's defining the board. We see that shapes are being defined as 2D, 2D arrays, and we can see that um, the different shapes are being represented here, I, J, L, O, S, T, Z. Okay, so this kind of looks like it could be Tetris. We see some colors are defined, so I guess red is gonna be used for um, any piece, and then we have a reset color. But we're probably gonna need to change this code so that each individual piece has a different color. Uh, we can see the code to create the board, which basically um, fills a 2D array with dots based on the board width and board height. That makes sense. And then we see that we can randomly um, create a piece by choosing from our shapes array and generate the, the pieces values based on what's in the actual shapes. Uh, we see a code to draw the board. So we see here that we just clear the system and then we're just printing to the um, standard output. So we print Tetris, we print the current score, and we print each row of the board using these brackets to basically represent our Tetris board. So we kind of get a sense of how the code works here and what they're trying to do. It does make sense. Uh, we have code to check if it's a valid position for the falling piece. We have code to merge the falling piece into the board. And then finally, we have remove completed rows, which would allow us to increment the score when we've completed a row. So all this code looks perfectly good and makes sense. We see what the data structure is for the Tetris game. And the problem came that that's it. There wasn't any more code. So it kind of looked like an, an idea that started, but it didn't actually give me the full output code. And then every time I tried to regenerate the response, it just kept stopping here. So I feel like it's some kind of limitation or bug with the current uh, generation or version of this chat GPT uh, AI code. Um, where it was not able to give me the full output of this program. I did find that if I ask it for specific functions, so for example, if there's a function missing like the main function, I could ask it and then it would uh, fill in that function. So I tried to ask it to um, you know, start the game and animate the falling Tetris pieces, but then it just gave me the same code again uh, and didn't complete it. And then I tried to ask it to just add the main function and start the game, but it still didn't do that, it gave me the same code again. Then I just asked it, okay, well, how about the input? We need to be able to take input and send messages back to the main thread. So we should have an input thread and we have the main thread that uh, renders the game. So I asked it to do that and then it gave me some threading code, which makes sense. 
So this is already a great resource for um, programmers that are maybe not familiar with Python or just new to programming, because you can just ask it straight up questions and have it give you code that actually works. And then you can have it explain to you how the code works. And it does a good job of also commenting out the code, uh, commenting the code and telling you what um, each section does. So that's the positive here. There is that bug where it didn't actually give me the full output of the program. So I kind of had to like fill in the gaps, um, which was OK. So I asked it here, write, a, uh, write Python code to check if the following piece uh, is at the bottom of the board. So here, this basically gives me a definition that I was able to just grab and, and copy and then add it to my code and make it work with the original code that it gave me. Write code to check if the player lost. So here's the check loss code. So I was able to just copy that and add it to the source code that it originally gave me. Um, I asked some questions to kind of clarify issues that I saw in the code. Shouldn't any row of the following piece colliding with the top row be a loss? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and then I asked it to rewrite the code because it looked like check loss was incorrect. So here's the new version of check loss. So it's kind of like we're working together. I detected bugs in, in chat GPT's code. I detected code that's missing. And then I was kind of able to massage it into something that actually works. Yeah, so th this is basically the process of what it was like working with ChatGPT to kind of make this game. It did give me some really good boilerplate, but it didn't give me a full working example. I just kind of had to know where it was going and kind of um, build out the code. But it was a really good starting point versus me trying to write everything from scratch on my own. Um, however, it was kind of annoying when um, the code that it wrote had missing parts and I had to figure out what was missing and then go back and ask it. Um, but you can kind of see where this is headed, where it would just be able to output it in one shot and you would just copy the code and then you'd have a working game. Okay, so let's jump into the code here. So my editor of choice is Mac Vim on Mac OS. It's a power editor that is very easy to use, but also very powerful. So you can see how concise the code is here. It's only 273 lines of code. And most of it, probably 85% of it was generated by chat GPT. I kind of had to just piece it together and make the logic work. But you can see that it's very similar to the original code that we got from ChatGPT. So over here, we have some constants. We define the board height and width, some strings for the title score and when the game is over. We have the game speed set to 30 frames per second. And then we just define some colors in ASCII. And we have our shape definitions, um, which are just defined as 2D arrays with these characters. And then we use the character to map it to each color. So every shape has a specific color. So the code here, create board, is board empty, create piece, draw the board. These were all generated from chat GPT. So you can see the board is being drawn by clearing out the standard output and then writing the game title, the game score, and then for every row in the 2D array that represents the board, we just output the values in that row. We check to see if the piece that's falling is at a valid position. Uh, if it's at the bottom, we clear the piece. If we need to remove it from the board, we merge in a new piece uh, if it needs to be added to the board. And then rotate the piece. Of course, we'll rotate the 2D array that represents the piece by 90 degrees. Pretty straightforward and remove completed rows is basically just going to remove the um, rows that are completely full and update our score. We check for a loss to see if we had a collision at the top um, row in the board. And then get arrow keys, of course, is reading from standard input to see if we got the characters which represent the arrow keys up, down, right, left. Otherwise, we just return none. And then here's our main loop. So we set some state to start the game, the game score, we create a new board, we have an offset for the piece, um, which will be changing as the piece is falling and as we press the arrow keys. And then we have the creation of the initial piece, some state to check to see if the piece is falling, whether or not it has been merged this frame. And then here's our game loop, which is going to start. We um, get our input synchronously. We don't have you know, a background thread here to do um, the input, and we're not sending messages over to the game thread, just for simplicity's sake. Um, of course, you know, if you know, we wanted to make this uh, truer to the original version of Tetris, we would do this asynchronously and then have the pieces being falling uh, without having to press anything. 
So uh, a cool tip with Python, uh, if you're new to Python and you haven't done debugging in Python, is you can do something called a runtime breakpoint by using this uh, library called PDB. It's kind of like GDB for C and C++. And if you call a method called setTrace, then if I execute the code at runtime, now I'm going to hit a breakpoint. So if I am here, you can see that I'm in the debugger, and I can step through the code, see what the current values are in the stack, and then basically be able to debug what's going on, set new breakpoints. So this is a really cool way to quickly debug a program at runtime and see what's going on uh, as you're writing the code. Just a quick tip there. OK, so let's be get back to the source code, comment that out. So this section here is basically just checking uh, what the new offset is going to be after we have um, received the input. So which arrow key was pressed is going to change what the offset is. And then we're going to try to see if that new offset for the piece uh, is going to be a valid position and whether or not it's at the bottom. Uh, if it is a valid position, then we can try to merge it in. Uh, if the new offset is not a valid position, then we're going to try to just merge the old offset from the last frame um, of the piece falling. We're going to check to see if there's any completed rows here at the part here. And then we're just going to add uh, to the score for every completed row. We're going to draw the board. And if a piece isn't falling, we create a new piece that's going to be falling. And then we just reset the state. The offset's going to go back to zero. Otherwise, if the piece is uh, still falling and it was merged, then we're just going to clear the old value of the piece so that we can input a new value um, as it falls in the next frame. Now, if the piece is falling and we're not able to merge it, then that basically means the game is over and we're just going to print game over. And we sleep, so we basically wait every single frame so that we can run the game at this speed, which is 30 frames per second, as we mentioned. And that's basically what gets us to this game, where, as you can see, I can control the game. I'm getting the input from the arrow keys. And I can rotate my pieces. And as I cleared a row there, you can see the score was updated to 100. And you can see there's a different color for every piece. And it is pretty playable. So still pretty fun, even as just ASCII or Tetris, uh, thanks to ChatGPT. So let's just. Finish the game here real quick. So you can see that this code is pretty similar to the original code that I got back from ChatGPT. So as you can see, they were using X's for every single character, but we wanted to set a color for each character, so we had to modify that. Uh, some of these uh, functions are pretty much exactly the same, and then we asked it to define um, some other functions, like how to get the input and how to check to see if we're at the bottom. But overall, I would say my experience with ChatGPT this generation um, was like a 6.5 out of 10. Of course, you know, the program didn't work out of the box, and I did have to kind of tweak it to get it to work. But you can kind of see where this is going and how this is going to really, really drastically improve in the next 5 to 10 years. And we'll just be able to ask it something, and it'll just give you working code that compiles. The game would work out of the box, and you could then ask it questions to kind of explain to you how things work. So it's going to be a very interesting future when we can just generate code that easily and, and you can kind of see the, the steps that we're taking to get there. So this definitely can be a great um, tool to have under your belt, along with Stack Overflow and Google and your actual peer programming friends um, that you can ask questions. So this was a fun exercise to do. So if you appreciated this content, please make sure to like, to comment, to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.